Hello, and welcome to another episode of EQCast. I'm your host, Christy Pritchard. Thanks so much for joining us on this unconventional sideshow of healing and self-betterment. This is where you can find unscripted conversations with authentic humans sharing their trials and triumphs around their emotional wellness journey. We keep it light, but we can get dark, so fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to the show. I've got my wonderful guest, Clayton Cutery, with me today, and he is a software engineer who studied four years of university in computer science, and he's a fellow podcaster as well, and he's also starting a course that helps you find your higher purpose in this life. So welcome, Clayton. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you having me. Anytime. So Clayton and I have actually been chatting for like the last... I would say half an hour or so. Um, I might cut into what we were talking about because it was recording and it was some pretty juicy, interesting stuff. So if you notice some chop in the in the video, that is why. But yeah, Clayton is living in Brazil currently. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your life down there and what you've been working on lately? Yeah, my so as you alluded to, we were talking about earlier. I uh, you know I've I found my way. Man, well, what am I doing right now? <laughs> <It's> right <there. laughs> yeah, sounds good. Right now, I am just learning Portuguese, studying jujitsu, and working on the course that you mentioned. And that's really what my main focus is, you know, being here in Brazil. Yeah. And so, life in Brazil right now. It's uh, pretty cool. I mean, like you're discussing it with the retrograde and everything, it's been a little bit chaotic. Like, yeah. first time living by myself, don't know anybody. Um, you know, I don't I, I'm like conversational in the language. So it's always, uh, it's always an interesting event whenever I'm checking out just to (laughs) even just pay for something. Right. Um, How are you learning by the way? Like what's the, are you learning through a program or through like a book or something? Duolingo is super helpful. I'll give them a little bit of a plug. (laughs) Um, That wasn't on purpose by the way, (laughs) but uh, yeah, I'll check them out because I really want to learn Spanish just in case we have to flee the coop. <laughs> yeah, there's a, <laughs> yeah, and here's a little tidbit. Uh, if you're, when you're learning a language, I think the biggest issue that people do is, is they will associate, and it's difficult with Duolingo because this happens, but you associate word to word. So like, hello is hola. So you associate yeah. hola to hello. The issue is, is that it's going to always kind of stop you in a sense from becoming fluent because what happens is is that you want to say hi so you think your head hi and then you need to think what's the word for hi hola as opposed to if you're in english it's just hi you know so then whenever you're kind of um so what's the solution to this is, is if you're going through something like duolingo you know i will usually read the sentence of whatever it is see that like image of that when i would use that sentence Mm -hmm. And then just kind of like repeat that sentence in my target language over and over. Right. So it's more almost imagery based. I guess it depends on how you learn. I'm a visual learner myself. And that's why languages kind of eluded me throughout my childhood. I even, I studied Spanish because I went to high school in California and Spanish was a part of my life for four years. And I, and I took it in university and it's still like, (laughs) I go, well, unless I'm back and hit the tequila pretty hard and then somehow I'm fluent, but other than that, it's crazy. it's weird how that's a thing though and oh it's like i know because they're talking back to me so i know that i'm not completely belligerent yeah <laughs> it's quite funny uh but it's yeah. still it's it's because i'm a visual learner so thank you for that because that's a right. pretty good piece of information just to visualize Anytime. your damn self yeah, yeah that's perfect yeah. um we actually had initially when we first connected on telegram like a couple of days ago we had talked about talking about bitcoin and i still do want to touch on that because it's something that i'm learning myself and i know we didn't talk about it in the first part of our yeah. Our, our conversation but I have been learning a fair bit like I'm still a noob d- definitely fresh but I'm purchasing stuff and I'm learning the difference between ethereum and bitcoin and and other cryptos coming out awesome. and what the what the heck the blockchain is and what an a- nft is I just found out all yeah. this stuff in the last couple of weeks and my brain is just like <sighs> But yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And it's exciting to know that there's a decentralized form of monetization out there without mm-hmm. having it be run by the one like a family and like a yeah. system, <laughs> you yeah. know, essentially it's, it's liberating. I don't know. So just to jump right into that, actually, I forgot we were even going to talk about <laughs> until right this second, yeah. but I, yeah, I'm enthralled. What do you, what is your background with it? Like, where did you start learning about it? Um, so I guess I probably first heard about it maybe like 2014, 2015 ish. Um, I, you know, I didn't really, 
I think know much about it. It was kind of back whenever it was bigger on like the dark web and people were using it for. It was on the nef- dark web. Wow. Oh, yeah. That was the only, that was what they used know. back. Then. Okay. Yeah. I didn't like know the history of it. Hmm. Oh yeah. That was, uh, I don't even I mean, know. I guess that's what it is. But... Oh, you don't. No, well, I've heard of it, but I just like, I'm like, I have no idea what, where it is or what it looks like or anything like that, but. I mean, at a high level, it's like you, you kind of have to go through these different, let's say protocols. Like you can't really sign into, um, what would be like Google Chrome or something. You're not gonna be able to like find it. Right. Um, and so it's a, it's basically, it, it's set up so that you can't be tracked and, you know, there's an element of, you know, sending what would have been is Bitcoin. And they were essentially sending, you send someone Bitcoin and you get a, you know, you order whatever drugs you want to order and you get a box of sneakers and the sneakers are stuffed with all of your <laughs> drugs. <laughs> That's and, wild. I didn't even know yeah. that was the thing. Um, yeah. Um, I think it got shut down though in 2016 ish, I think. Um, I had a buddy who I actually had a group of friends who bought I don't know, from what I remember, like at least a thousand dollars worth of drugs and it got shut down like the next like day or oh, so. No. Yeah. Oh, so no. they, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like yeah, just so, trying to experiment with the black web for the first yeah. time. Black web, what is it called? Oh, I sound like such a noob. Yeah, it's oh, all that's good. funny. But oh, that's too bad for them. But Bitcoin was on there initially. I didn't even know that. So how it came out into the mainstream. Because the guy I've heard that invented it, he's just not, he doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, well, he's, yeah the name is Satoshi. So. Yeah, Satoshi, Nakam- Satoshi Nakamoto, I believe I pronounced that correct. Yeah, I think so. That sounds um, like right. Yeah, nobody really even knows if it's a person, if it's an organization. There's theories that are floating out there that it's actually like elements of the CIA, which I have no idea if that's Ooh. true or not. Would that be a Who way knows? to steal everyone's money? I was wondering about that, but now it's so decentralized and I'm, I'm listening to this podcast called... Uh, the something of money oh damn I could totally give them a plug right now too it's such a great podcast but it's more about the spirituality element of it as well as just like bringing it into how it functions and and the decentralization and yeah and, and all the different elements that it takes and it kind of alleviated some anxiety that I had around the potentials of it to be taken over by like a family or the CIA or something right. but when you say that I'm like if it's them then we're fucked <laughs> but <laughs> um we're pretty much good on that front. And maybe uh, usually I think this is probably a better place to start is like why Bitcoin. And I think that's a huge like piece of this puzzle, right? Because I think if you understand everything that happens within, it's like, okay, great. But if you don't understand why this stuff's important, then I think a lot of the conversation gets lost. So exactly. yeah. So that's why I started not... with that podcast. It starts with the kind of the why, like why it's important to have oh, okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And it ties in the decentralization and the and then it brings in spirituality as well, which I really resonated with. Does it talk yeah. about the Federal Reserve? It does not. I'm only on episode eight. So they're pretty okay, long. So, well, so so there's a so there's a book and everything I'm about to kind of say, I highly recommend if you want to know a deep dive of this, it's called The Web of Debt. Yeah, Web um, of Debt. It's a pretty thick book, but it goes through like the history of money, right? It, it talks about, I haven't personally read it, but I've, I've uh, read, I've watched like lectures of the lady who wrote the book and, you know, kind of heard from other people what gets discussed and, uh, you know, without getting too deep into it, right? The whole point of money is to have a valid bartering system, right? Like if, if you have something I want, I need to give you something so that we have an equal trade on our hands. Yeah. Um, and so what ended up occurring was, is, you know, for, it, it was initially like goods to goods. So if I had, let's say a microphone and you had a video camera, like, you know, we would trade based off those things, but that's, it becomes very difficult to find things of equal value in that sense. So the next step was to create essentially um, what we know today as fiat money, which is like physical, you know, money um, that's in circulation. Yeah. I think about the U S dollar, the yen, the Euro, And so people started creating those. And so essentially, you know, if we agreed upon the value of one US dollar, it became very easy for us to trade a microphone and all these things. Well, the problem was in that situation is that too many currencies were being made. So there were people who gathered on benches and the French word for bench is something that sounds like the word bank. And so banks were initially created in order to have an equal transfer of currency, right? So like if you have, um, 
you know, I don't know, a podcast coin and I have a Clayton coin, then we can't like, what's the value of that relative right. to each other? Yeah. So banks became like this centralized thing to um, essentially delineate that trade between the currency. So as the whole story progresses and, you know, it, it goes on a wild ride and um, along the way in the 1913 on in December of 1913 uh, the U S government introduced um, the federal reserve. Well, uh, the federal, the reason for the federal reserve, which first of all, it's not even associated with the federal government, which is a very common like misconception. Misconception, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's essentially just a, a conglomerate of all the big banks. That's all the federal reserve is. And it was built for a need, let's say. I mean, there was, you know, there was a, a bunch of ups and downs in the economy. You know, people get scared of something. So they want, you know, other people to fix their fear. So we're going to put all their trust into the Federal Reserve. And the purpose of the Federal Reserve um, was essentially to regulate the U.S. economy and in order for it to run smoothly in theory. That was the whole purpose. Um It's fascinating how, you know, all this different compromise came in and all these different things. But regardless, I I don't want to get too much into details. I don't know that much. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, its point was is to regulate the economy. And Mm -hmm. in the Constitution, it says that you're not able to coin money. Well, because and back in the day, originally a coin of money was that just that a piece of coin. Right. It was Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, silver or uh, gold and, you know, they had these actual coins. So the government said, well, we can't coin money, but now money's starting to move to paper. So now we can actually technically make it because it's not technically coin. And so this whole, this whole word game. Yeah. Um, around this time, and I don't know exactly when the transition happened. So this is something to definitely fact check. We came off of the gold standard, which the gold standard for those who don't know is that for every dollar that's in circulation, there needs to be a piece of gold that backs it up. Yeah, this is what now it's all on paper. And yeah, we've got a whole other issue there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so around this time, we came away from that standard where now you can basically print money out of thin air and even gold, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And so, um, yeah, so essentially the way our current system is set up, right, is if you hear that the government printed, let's say, X trillion dollars, what they essentially did was is they went to all the big banks and said, hey, we need money, give us money. And the big bank said, okay, we'll do that. And so we will just basically issue you just money. Now, what happens is, is that the Federal Reserve, which you probably hear a lot, is they set the interest rate. And again, let me remind you that the, the quote unquote Federal Reserve is technically the, all the private banks. It's the conglomerate of private banks. And is it so, world, connected to the World Bank? Sorry if this is a silly question. No, that's a it's a good like question. A and follow up. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. That, <laughs> okay. That's a that's a different rabbit hole off of all of right. this. Right. Okay. Um, God, so many rabbit holes. So little time. <laughs> yeah. There's something okay, called the I, just to briefly touch on that. There's something called yeah. like the IMF. IMF. Uh, and so then they basically. In short, they went and basically propped up like third world countries and said, hey, you know, your your currency is unstable, match it off of the US dollar and we will prop up your currency. So it's actually quite genius what you know, ne- nefariously nefarious genius. way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Buggers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> hey, if you believe in the United States, then match your dollar off, or match your coin, your fiat currency off of the dollar. Mm-hmm. And we will work with you to stabilize your economy. And whenever you're a country that is, um, you know, not progressing in all these things, it's very tempting and easy to say, okay, sure. And so Yeah, that's kind of (laughs) how, that's a brief overview of all the other countries. So where was I? We were veering back into Bitcoin eventually, but I think you were, yeah, I think it was. We're still on the why. (laughs) Yeah, oh yeah, right. (laughs) We're still Um, on the why. The why part, yes, why there's Bitcoin, okay, right. Uh, So the issue that has now accrued over the United States is you have all the private banks setting the interest rate, and I believe they've held it at 0%, which means if the U.S. government goes to the Federal Reserve, i.e. the private banks, and says, hey, we need money, they will just give them the money at no interest whatsoever, which is, uh, you know, I don't know what to say about that. So 
the Federal Reserve, the big point of it is at zero, but as it kind of seminates down to us at the lower level, they need to start adding interest to us so that they're able to uh, make money for themselves. I mean, at the end of the day. So by the time that money gets down to us, there's a little bit more interest on it, but it's still lower than what we were paying before because the mega structure of the banks determined that, well, we're going to just give it to the government at zero. And on top of that, if anyone's ever had college loans or tuition loans or massive loans with high interest, you know that you are almost always, if you're paying the bare minimum, you're almost always just paying the interest cost on it yeah. and never really getting to the principal. Yeah. And so that is the issue that we currently have with the United States where we're not even paying off the principal amount that we've borrowed. We're still mm-hmm. trying to pay off now so the interest. That is, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, this is a pockets and draining yours. Exa- <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, and they make the Federal Reserve has made a tremendous <laughs> amount of money. It's, Can't even, there's not even a number to equate the dollar value of it, I'm sure. Like it's probably yeah. insurmountable, I'm assuming. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I know that's a pretty convoluted way, right? But the, the problem is, is I think the fundamental problem, in my opinion, is that we have people trying to regulate other people in a sense, right? We, I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's myself. I don't care if it's you. I don't care if it's someone who claims to be the smartest person in the world. I personally don't believe, and this is a personal belief, that one person is able to possibly say how we can stabilize a a dollar. Like, I just don't see how that's even possible. And I get that there's ways that you can, you move interest rate, you can do certain things, but it's... uh, but if we're Maybe printing money, away. if we're printing money continuously and there's no end game, like with Bitcoin, for example, 21 million is the cap and then that's it. Like let's let's start with this. A basic economy, economics, economics 101, right, is yeah. um, supply demand, right? Yes. If, mm-hmm. if you have a huge supply of stuff and you don't have demand for it, then it's worthless. If there's yeah. a huge demand and a small supply, then it becomes super valuable. Yeah. Like the housing um, market in British Columbia. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh and so what's happening is, is, is they are just printing off money, like you even stated. And so you're just increasing the supply of it. Well, I mean, I guess demand will always kind of be there for it. But the issue is, is if you just keep, in, excuse me, increasing supply, you're just going to, you have to create inflation. And, inflation, exactly. And I personally don't understand how, you know, there's all these arguments that inflation isn't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's but to happening. me, I'm like, it's already LA, here. Yeah. Like it's everywhere. Yeah. Every day. Like food prices, rent prices, yep. gas, gasoline in yep. Canada is uh, like in British Columbia is obscene. Like it's, I had yeah. a friend visiting on route from Alaska back to the States and he drove through and he was like, I don't even, how do you guys afford gas? Like, I don't even understand. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's pretty bonkers, but that's where we see inflation and people don't, and it, they do it in such a microcosm amount in, but around the space spectrum of everything that we rely on right. that it's kind of hard to really see it you know? right but right it, 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 because, yeah exactly inflation. no that's mm-hmm. i mean that's that's a perfect like tie-in to every day is like you can you see it i mean you there's a beautiful graph that shows like the value of the dollar and it like has the dollar outline but then it's like shows it getting like kind of chiseled out and it shows <laughs> like how you know ten dollars today um, ten dollars back, like in 1913, when this started, could buy you like a thousand dollars of stuff worth today. It's yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and so to that point, uh, where are we going on this? Bitcoin, uh, 21 million cap. So just at a high level, there can there will only be 21 million um, Bitcoin ever created, and that that sets that supply limit on top of it. And right now, I think the demand is honestly pretty low for it, in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah, it does seem like it is. But we're at 17 million now, though, correct? Uh, I think we're at like 19 million right now. 19. Jeez. Um, ah, well, let's get up there. <laughs> I need to buy some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. well, and so what happens is called halvings. So so there's validators on. This is where it's going to start getting a little bit uh, dicey, right? So. Mm. Let's uh let's take a look at just let's try to take a step back here. Okay. Um, you and I want to perform a transaction with each other. It's like okay, let's. I'm gonna send you a hundred dollars, right? It's like okay, how do we verify that that transaction is real? In present day, we use a bank. A bank says, okay, Clayton has a hundred. He can send it to it. And, you know, we're good. Um, the way that Bitcoin works is essentially, uh. Okay, so another step back to the banks, right? The way they know that is because they can trace 
everywhere that the money has gone in order for it to get to my pocket privately and, and then, quietly too yeah right. well, that's to yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother thing yeah that but that's it's, it's a very valid point because i know you're going to mention later what what we see in, in bitcoin and it's really important to note that and another reason sure. why we love bitcoin um, but sure. let's go back to the privacy and banks continue sorry i just wanted to sure no over. that's no it's a good point right because you we don't know, we essentially don't know how any, where any money goes, right? You have no idea, like the government printed a trillion dollars, right? There's no way for us to see where exactly that money went, how it got spent. Um, I mean, they have bills out there and some, whoever reads these 20,000 page bills, I don't <laughs> yeah. even know who does. Like, <laughs> it's obscene. Yeah. Uh, I remember the stimulus. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. That'll, <laughs> that'll, so that'll, many rabbit holes, so little time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, essentially, the way blockchain works in general, the blockchain as a whole is there's a ledger and this ledger has the history of every single transaction that has occurred on it. And everybody has it. Everybody, essentially all the miners have it in actuality. We technically don't have it since we only have wallets, but um, you know, anyone who is mining or working on uh, Bitcoin, they have the algorithm and they have a ledger. Mm -hmm. And with these two pieces of information, they're able to set up their machines that can verify transactions, right? So if I send you money, what happens is, is it, it technically becomes a spot on the ledger or it gets sent to a miner who says, okay, can we validate as this being a legitimate transaction? Mm -hmm. So they say, okay, what is the history of this? And they go and they look through and Bitcoin's extremely inefficient at this, but you know, it, it is what it is. And they go through and say, okay, well, you know, Clayton has one Bitcoin and he's sending one Bitcoin. So let me see, where did he get his Bitcoin from? Okay. And it goes down and tracks the history of it. Yeah. And so Bitcoin's, what it's called is a consensus mechanism. And Bitcoin's consensus mechanism is deemed proof of work, which is essentially what the, the miners are doing is they're, they're proving that transactions are legitimate through work, which is through like uh, cryptographic sequences. And cryptography in its own right is a master's level engineering discipline, which I am not going to get into because that's not my <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> right. Yeah. It sounds very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this process essentially that I send you money, they say it's valid and then they, you get it. Everybody can see that. So it's publicly accessible, that transaction. And you know, there's pros and cons to that being publicly accessible, but at the end of the day, we all know you know, where the money's going, who transferred what, and, you know, it's, it, there's pros and cons. Conspiracy is like pro to me personally. Like if, if we would have fallen and kept with that and kept with that idealism of transparency, like you say, there's pros and cons to it. Personally, I don't see very many cons to it other than the fact that people that have something to hide want something to hide. And I don't think that's a very healthy society personally, if you're going to be on a macrocosm, you know, I don't think sure. it's very healthy to, to have to hide things. The, the con in my eyes is just that like you know in order for you to buy a cryptocurrency you need to go on to like an exchange where you have to fill out like all your social security information what so if you go to somewhere like binance or coinbase or right. kraken or any of these um exchanges they operate under i think it's called kyc which is essentially know your customer so they have to report to the federal reserve oh, or the okay. is it the okay. isa and no, it's not the isa it's the irs, IRS. yeah, yeah. They have to report to the IRS, you know, all these things that they have. And so I, so my personal belief is I think the one drawback to crypto is it's not completely away yet. We're not completely away yet from the government knowing what we're doing with. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, gotcha. I it's mean, decentralized it's, in its validation. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but we're not, not like away, away from the government. Yeah. We're not, yeah. we're not independent from from we're not sovereign from correct whatever, whatever we're correct to. okay yeah and yeah because whatever whatever coin whatever let's say um because the fact that the ledger is public whoever you operate with let's say it's coinbase they have to report to the irs so the irs and coinbase both know that you have purchased cryptocurrency they also know which wallets you've sent this cryptocurrency to and at that point since everything's public they're able to trace it all and see where and what you did with all those right. coins which I, I guess my argument is, is that it's, it's at least a step away from the issue we have with fiat currencies. And I, I think I just see that as like the next kind of barrier that we have to figure out how to get past. Right. 
yeah, that would be an interesting barrier to try and get past. I wouldn't even, I can't even wrap my yeah. mind. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's beyond our pay grade, I think. That's we'll the next just, step, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll stick to podcasting and talking <laughs> about Bitcoin. I was trading Forex actually last okay. year. I still am sometimes, but now I'm really getting into crypto and I like learning about it. So Forex to me is just like, sure, you can check a couple of charts in, in, on certain websites and you can kind of see if there was something like going on in their economy. And so you'd have a better chance at at knowing which currency is going to go up or down. And then, so like there was that, but with crypto, it's like, you're also looking at long-term, you're studying the technology and you're studying what those companies are doing and where they're heading. And, and you kind of, it's more interesting to me. So I kind of like, I haven't been trading Forex for a while now because I'm trying to learn about crypto, but it's just like, every time I open up a new door, I'm down this rabbit hole. I spent a whole like day on NFTs the other day. And I was like, Holy man, those are wild in their own right. I know. I'm so excited because (laughs) I have some, I have some interesting things that might just fly, you know, some personal recordings of of famous people. And I'm like, Hmm, I wonder if I could sell that. Yeah, I think you probably could. Never know. Yeah, yeah some backstage. Find stuff. your market. Like, why not? I know. So I'm like really excited to dive into that next week. But that's awesome. Yeah. Something but, we... so back. To... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna circle back. Um, because we were talking about uh the 21 million coins and you were asking yes, about how yeah. so what essentially happens is every four years there's what's called a halving. So they cut the rewards in half. Right. So remember how we were saying, like, if I pay you something, we need a validator or a miner to, to validate that that transaction exists. Yeah. Well, I pay some of that fee to them to validate it, but then they also are going to get a fee for essentially adding another block onto the blockchain. Right. So every validator that's worked on that block is going to get paid out from the, you know, the background of Bitcoin to make more Bitcoin. There's oh. the technology is... The way that Bitcoin is set up is that, yeah, it's programmed that once you complete an entire block of the blockchain, you get paid out a little bit of Bitcoin. Okay, and so that's I how see. more Bitcoin is getting added into circulation. And so then there's thing, there's what's called the halvings. And every four years, there's a halving, which means they have the amount of they, the algorithm, the code halves the amount of money that they provide to the miners. And so honestly, I don't think the last halving is until like 2034-ish. So, or 2030, one of the two. Mm. Um, Yeah, so there will still be more. Yeah, yeah. So these last like 2 million, they're going to take, it takes a while for it to actually get into circulation. I see. Um, But if you look at like the past, every time these halvings occur, the value just jumps within like a month or two after it, you know? Crazy. When was the last halving? That's a good question. Um. I don't want to make a guess. I don't want okay. to guess and That's put okay. that out there. It's all good. Yeah. I'm just going to make a note to like, look it up. Cause I'm curious I if it was I prior quick... to me because I, I actually accidentally ended up with Bitcoin cause I had to purchase open yeah. up shake pay and purchase them to trade high frequency, what's called high frequency Forex, which is just really, you're trading micro bits of, of currency. And I was trading that in order to do that. I had to open up the shake pay account and get Bitcoin cause I could only trade with this one broker with Bitcoin. Okay. And so I had some leftover because I didn't want to move everything into this account. And just in case I blew it, because I never tried HF before. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll just move this much in there and I'll leave whatever rent my residual. I had the minimum amount to open the account. And then I think I had $130 left over in my Bitcoin account, which is now... Phew, it's like yeah. I, a lot more. <laughs> Let's Love just it. say, yeah, and it was just random, accidental, like loose change in the bottom of my purse that just, you know. Oh wow! So, oh, so I I found the numbers that I was looking for here. Yeah. I, I mean, sorry to cut no, you no, off. No, no, you totally didn't. I was rambling. Um, <laughs> so it, the numbers actually a lot a lot further than what I initially said, and I'm glad we got the right information here. We actually got a lot longer. The last having will actually occur, or the last Bitcoin will be minted in 2140. Oh, wow. That's so yeah. far away. Yeah. So it kind of shows you that exponent. It almost like decreases exponentially about how much money, how much they've put into circulation. And the last having was in 2020, which oh, I was okay. going to guess. That makes sense. But, Actually, that makes a lot yeah. of sense because that is exactly what I would have probably. And that was, that's the reason for my jump then because it was okay. an obscene yeah. jump. Yeah. And I mean, quite frankly, based on the way it's, the market's happening right now, I, again, I would like to preface this is not financial advice. This is advice not financial whatsoever. advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> None of this is financial no, advice. No. No. <laughs> um, based on how the market's performing right now, my personal guess of what's about to happen is, 
And again, not financial advice. And I think everybody has opinions. Nobody knows for sure. I, I guess this is the first time I've ever recorded a prediction. So I just want to, right, yeah. you know, <laughs> really stamp ego. it out there. As soon as when I record this, I'll just have not financial advice and a little banner right below <laughs> your face. Yeah, continue. Just be like, this is purely for like an ego standpoint because I want to see yeah. if my prediction's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be your own uh, yeah. Nostradamus. Yeah. yeah, let's see. I think it's like performing at like, I don't know. It might be at like 60K right now. Um, what I think is about to happen is it's probably about to go to like 280, 250 K. And then I think, and that's probably over the next like three or four months. And then I think that's, that's my guess. Yeah. Who knows? I like your guess again, but (laughs) let's be optimistic. Yes. (laughs) It'll probably, I think then it'll probably correct down to like 120 K ish. And then it'll probably sit around there for a while. And then I, who knows from there, but that's probably my guess over the next, um, I, I would, I would probably see that trajectory happening over like the next six months of it going to about 250, let's say, and then go down to like 120 and then chill around there for a year or so. Cool. That's very, I like that prediction a lot. I keep meaning to <laughs> re, re-get back into my, I got really sidetracked this week um, with the crypto and stuff. So I need to get back on track so I can start getting what's called the cold wallet and getting yes. all that stuff in line. And that's really important things I wouldn't have known about had I not done my own research and connected with other people on YouTube and stuff that are not connected with them, but yeah. watch their videos. Yeah. I want to have crypto Casey on here. She's amazing. I love her. Have you watched any yeah, of her videos? Nah, yeah. Oh, she's great. Her. She's just okay. like 101 stuff. And this is where I've, I've gotten most of my info from. So she's been very I mean, helpful. End of the day. End of the day, keep it basic, you know? Yeah, totally. And I have, and then it's, and that's exactly how I've understood it. Cause I, and I started with the, like the initial element of why, and that's what that podcast is all about, but they were, yeah, they just talked about the why for, and it brought it into spirituality and stuff and religion. They're even talking about it as a religion. And I was like, okay, yeah. this is getting, this is getting deep, but I I'm still on board. I'm still following, but well, and that's, what is your and that's take on, on it with that? which part uh just the spirituality the it's more of a it's like a following that i've never quite seen before bitcoin you're saying yeah yeah oh yeah the, you know that's actually a pretty interesting comparison because i i follow it like on reddit and it's a very i don't know it's kind of reddit's a very bizarre place and uh <laughs> sure it's, it's, you can find it, any it, question to any answer that you would ever yeah. want on reddit <laughs> and none of them none of them line up so you yeah. can find any answer you want to right yeah yeah, yeah exactly. it's like but what stuck out to me about that was the religion aspect of it because if we take a step back where i'm talking about the federal reserve i started watching like kind of different youtube videos in preparation for this and like it it seemed like this information wasn't really out there. Like it's almost kind of hidden that the federal reserve is actually not a part of the federal government. And I don't know that people don't fully understand that. Like, Uh, um, you know, it's kind of, it's just bizarre in my mind. Like I don't understand how it's, and I've even talked to, um, you know, I've, I've heard people say that like, Oh, and what I just said, and maybe you'll get people who say that I'm completely wrong on that because I've, I've heard that people have said that it's completely wrong, that that's not how it works. And I've like looked at it and I'm like, I don't, so I don't know if it's like, I don't know if it's like a religion aspect where people are like, they don't want to believe that that's kind of how it is. Like the fact that the federal government doesn't have control over the federal banks. Like it's like our entire monetary system is not controlled by the federal government. Like no. I, maybe that's just like a hard thing for people to hear. Yeah, and so I there's like, an- so. I, people want to have all faith in, in their, their governmental systems. They don't want to believe right. that there's anything nefarious to use that word again, going on within. And we're, we're seeing a lot of that right now. People disregarding very valid, very substantiated information that they're just refusing to look at because it goes beyond what their scope of understanding sure. is. And it's scary, you know, and I get that, like I understand. And it takes a huge amount of courage to look past your fears and see that there's other options for information out there. And that's, like a good chance that that's correct as well and you know there's truths and and lies and everything and every bit of information you're going to find fragments of each so i think it's really challenging to to move past that fear and be like oh so what i've known my whole life or what i've understood my whole life may be incorrect and that you have to you have to strip your ego down in order to get to that point you know because the ego loves to be right Uh, yeah. I mean, it was the core of my prediction at the beginning of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for, oh yeah, yeah. For the prediction yeah. of Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least, at yeah. least, you know, there's at no least that's where, yeah, yeah. At least you're aware of your, aware of that. And there was also, it was aiming to, 
to like predict some positivity rather yeah. than and yeah. but I mean the ego when it needs to be right even when you're blocking out very important information that could do to your do with your survival or the survival of a society or humanity and you're refusing to look at it because you're fearful and even you might not recognize that you're fearful I think sometimes it's under so many layers of crap that we're not even willing to and that's a whole other rabbit hole I just went down well, but it's something that's, that's, that's what, super that's relevant course, right now so that's what my course oh, yeah. is for so right. that's a perfect awesome. yeah. totally yeah. <laughs> and yeah while we're while we're on the topic of your course I'm really interested to hear more about it. I know you've kind of touched on it a little bit so getting through blockages and getting over getting over our egos getting over ourselves to find your higher purpose and to find out what you're I would love built to for. Send it, once I finish it and everything I'd love to send you it because I you know it's gonna be one of those cool. things I think I need to at least send out to people to kind of get their opinion on get some feedback Definitely. you know uh, yeah, sure. getting testimonials case studies yes. like yeah. you know getting that I'm, I'm know, here <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something I would I would want to take. Yeah. So definitely send it along. Would, Especially, you know, you're talking about you're talking about the dark night of the soul and everything. And like I'm I need to find a way to kind of like work that in. It might be a light brooch depending on your um demographic because when I've mentioned dark night of the soul to some people, they're like, uh what now? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Crazy witch lady. <laughs> like, oh man. But other people are like, oh yeah, I feel you. <laughs> like, and they just yeah. get it. There's a resonance there and they understand. Yeah. And but not it it's a polarity. It's like some people really do and some people really don't, unless you've experienced it. You really don't pretty yeah. much. Like you can read it all you want until you have to go through it. And it's not just the one time. Like I've been through a few and we'll probably continue to go through them for the rest of my life. Right. And I hope because that's just a deepening and that's more of a, an ascensioning and a deepening all at the same time, you know, like you're getting right. more grounded right. and more ascended all at once. And it's, yeah. There's a great Carl Jung quote. It's a, uh, no tree can reach its leaves into heaven without its roots reaching down to hell. I'm right. It's down to hell. Oh, I've got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right on. Yeah. Um, yes. I love Carl Jung. I've read a lot of him in university, but haven't really since. But yeah. But did we get off topic with our Bitcoin? I can't remember where we uh, did we come to. Well, a we're definitely not talking it? about it anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. I just wanted to make sure that we we had all the topics covered that we want to talk about, about that. And you think the audience would have gotten enough about it. And if not, like reach out to you on YouTube or Instagram. Yeah. yeah I love talking about with people. Yeah, totally. So what's your Instagram handle and people can reach out to you? Uh, personal Instagram yeah. handle is just Clayton Q. Terry, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N-C-U-T-E-R-I. <laughs> And then my podcast is um, my first name, last name, Clay and Q. Terry takes on the world. And then, Which you know, is awesome, like, by the way, I've been listening to some episodes. Yeah. Go give them Thank a you. listen. Yeah, definitely. And YouTube. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. YouTube, uh, all the streaming services, Spotify, Apple, yeah. um, you know, some, okay. I think some of the videos it is like for YouTube, you can kind of see different things. You get different energy from watching it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's basically, um, I'm not sure if we were talking about this before, but it's basically just me figuring out how people found their life purpose and like found their journey and, you know, this whole discovery thing. And so I think my whole like resonating thing was, okay, I'm going to take that and just put it into this course and condense it. Cause it took me like, I guess, I mean, arguably, you know, my entire life, but at least, you know, four years to figure out how to create that life. And so hopefully this course can help you figure it out a little bit quicker than that, but <laughs> you know, there, there's well, definitely some things in there you need to be doing actively all the time you know meditating eating healthy stuff like that but you know those are the yeah, the daily regulars i mean for the most part i fluctuate but i also transmute so when i do something that may not be the absolute best for me i i know it on a very conscious level and i but i'm also on a very subconscious level i'm like screw this this is my body this is my 3d reality anything that i'm doing now can be fully transmuted i don't look at it as like i'm doing it because it's bad you know i'm doing okay. whatever it is that i'm doing eating that pizza drinking my coffee in the morning which i don't think is bad and it's don't take away that my last bit of joy thank you anyone <laughs> and you know having my cocktails it's like i don't I don't look at that as being the worst thing for me, but I do think a lot of it is perception. And I think a lot of it is how we feel when we're doing it. If we're doing it to fill something negative, if we're doing it because it's freaking fun, positive. And, right. and 
if you haven't done the work around that, then you don't know the difference between negative and fun. You know what I mean? Your right. reactions to things like how you are when you eat junk food. Can you have a square of chocolate and then put the rest in the thing? Or do you like shovel the whole thing in your mouth? Like there are differences. Guilty. Then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So I think that that like, so when people say eating healthy, I'm like, well, I'm not like, I'm not actually the best, but I also have, when I'm doing the things that I know may not be the best, I know I have the right. best intentions for myself. You know, there's a crazy yeah oh 100 there's a book called intuitive eating and this is and so this is also something that relates back to the course i'm going to be dropping like all these books that i've kind of read throughout because honestly i found so many books that have just resonated with me and i'm like holy shit like you yeah. know this is what i've been looking for but to get back to your thing it's called intuitive eating and the whole purpose of it is to be in tune with your body and understand why you're eating and what you're eating for because you know that book it goes down the list of type of dieters there are and I fell into the category of a professional dieter, um, where I tried every single, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tried every single diet. I was like, all right, I'm not eating any of this. I'm not eating any of that. <laughs> I'm and... like the total opposite of you. I have never yeah. done that once in my life. No, I, can't. I, no, <laughs> I just, I just like, I don't, I never saw any point to it for one. And for two, okay. I just can't commit to anything for that long. I'm like, not eat like a piece of bread. I'm like, that doesn't sure my willpower could do it, but I didn't find the necessity. Right. And if you don't find the necessity, then there's no connection there. And I was just like, I don't see the point. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> the point? So I just, I personally have it, but good for you for doing it. No, I mean, like, I, because that's well, willpower. <laughs> it is willpower. Oh, it's certainly, certainly discipline, a level of discipline to yeah, it. Discipline, but, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. But I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would label it as healthy discipline. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, a couple of things here. Number one, I think it's a level of like, you know, when you tell yourself not to do something, you end up kind of wanting to do it more. Um, and then the actual layer of that and what intu the intuitive eating book gets to is it talks about how, you know, you need to be in tune with what you want, like, and what you need and what you eat and what your body actually needs to feel nourished. Like, do you need fruits? Are you actually thirsty? Are you like, maybe you do want a chocolate bar. Like, it's okay to have like one, but if you're eating, you know, 10, now there's like a little bit of an imbalance here, you know? It's all about balance. Yeah. It really boils down to balance for sure. So I do my like, yeah, my, just my, my stints of making sure that my organic green intake is on point and my smoothies are happening, which I just started doing again recently and, and those things, but then I can counterbalance it with whatever the heck I want. And I eat chocolate every single day of my life, but I have one Love spare it. and that's, and that's all I feel like I need. And it's a way for me to stop eating at the end of the night. Cause I'll just get snacky. <laughs> it sounds like a super healthy relationship you have with food. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I've never really questioned it too much. I just know I've never had an issue with it, you know? Yeah. And well, my yeah. body needs certain things too, because I'm active and like, just naturally right. like, you know, an active. I was going to see, I say you look like fit. It's not like you have like any, you know, weight issues. I mean, your skin looks good. Like, you know, it all seems And that's pretty... another thing. It comes out in your skin. If yeah. you're eating, like, and if yeah. you, and I've eaten crappily and it still doesn't come out of my skin because I think I'm looking at the food with love. I'm not looking at the food like this is bad. Oh, you know? for, but sure. I, for sure. And sometimes so it's what you're better. not eating. And I, I love this. Yeah. And I think, that's I think true. you have, I think your audience is a little bit on the spiritual side. So I'll, yes. I'll throw this in there. Um, I'm not sure if you, I've mentioned this in a couple of my podcasts, but I had like really bad, like kind of neck acne, kind of like on the side of my neck. And I've tried so many different things. I thought it was my pillows. I thought it was this or that, or wearing colored shirts or what I came to realize is in my whole, let's say spiritual awakening was the whole shocker system. Mm, yeah. Well, you, you know, colors represent different things. Yeah. There's different fruits, different colors. Yeah. You know, why do we see different colors? I'm kind of giving a high over, over uh, view, but um, it came to the color blue for throat chakra. Throat and chakra. I was like, I was like, you know, I never really eat any blueberries. So I wonder, you know, if this is the missing piece. Huh. And so for like the next three days, I, I probably ate like four cartons, like of blueberries, <laughs> like an yeah. un unhealthy amount. Yeah. <laughs> But I saw my neck, like it was, it was like night and day. It was like completely cleared up. Like everything was solid. I was like, holy shit. You know, it was wow. like, this was the missing piece of my, let's say diet. It's like, okay, this, this, my body's reacting because it's missing something, you know, it's not getting all the nutrients it needs. And I, there's an element of placebo versus like reality, but I possibly, but I'll, you know, whatever works, works too though. Right. Yeah. But it's funny though, that people are, our society and culture is always about takeaway culture. Like take this out, take that out. I like how you mm. add things. That's, yeah. that's, a nice, <laughs> that's a nice pendulum swing that you don't hear about very often. Yeah. They're the magic, the, diet. they're the magic bean. They are. 
so um, great. Was there was there I, any other questions you had about Bitcoin? No, I think we I think we covered in all the all the juicy glorious details that we were aiming to cover, plus a lot of juicy glorious details that we didn't aim to cover at the beginning of our conversation, which I'm going to try and work in. So again, yeah, if I'd love to hear cops it. and some weird stuff, then that's me just working some cool shit in because yeah. it's definitely <laughs> worth noting. I love bounce these around random conversations. Yeah, I might bounce around. Yeah. Hey, that's podcasting that's, for you. Yeah, that's the point of it, right? I'm so glad I reached out on Telegram. I don't do that often, but I saw on the podcasting group that you just touched on a lot of similar topics to my okay. podcast. And I love collaborating with like minded podcast. And in fact, all my guests recently have had similar style with their own their own kind of flair of a podcast. So really well, bring you out. I'm definitely going to bring you on uh, my podcast and we'll, we'll talk about your journey and we'll, you know, we'll figure that all out. It's a long one. Yeah. I'm glad your podcast is long. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yours are a good solid hour and a half. I love them. That's a hour and a half deep dive. Yeah. It's a good deep dive. It's really just however long it takes. I mean, you know, again, the end goal is just to hear about your process and see how life through you through you in the washing machine and <laughs> yeah. you know spit you out on I, the other I side got the, i got the what is the white the washboard myself uh yeah. you got the washboard, got treatment. The washboard <laughs> treatment yeah it, was a it wasn't time. as yeah. yeah i didn't get no gentle cycle no uh, I got, put I got it on tumble yeah. <laughs> pretty much uh, so funny that's awesome. awesome well i think we're probably at the end of our time anyways i don't know what happens sure. to Zoom when we reach the end but um thank you so much for coming on this was a brilliant conversation and all cool. your and all your insights and i'm gonna pick your brain some more about bitcoin in the future for sure cause... love it yeah it's definitely yeah. the start of the whole bitcoin rabbit hole like Absolutely. you know we've only we only talked about like one consensus mechanism which was like the proof of work and yeah. you know there's I don't know. There has to be at least like 12 to 15 different consensus mechanisms now. And oh, holy. Yeah, I don't even know I, what the consensus mechanism is yet. I haven't gone uh, that far, but yeah. Uh, proof uh, of work is Bitcoin. I'll tell you that. Oh, yes. And yeah, then the next big one is proof of stake. Oh, okay. That's another whole other conversation. Yeah. I guess this will be like maybe part one, too. And we can, I did that with another girl, too. And when, when my, uh, I guess it wasn't my audience, but I guess in this case, it would be when my audience got a chance to take the information, regurgitate, understand what the heck this is. And part two, to dive in a little deeper, which is that podcast that I listen to, which I'm going to put in the show notes anyways, because I've mentioned it so many times and I cannot for the life of me. (laughs) It'll just be in here. Oh, what is money? I just found it. What is money? All right. Yeah. What is money? The what is money show. Okay. Uh, No, I'd love to check it out. Yeah. Um, it has, what's his name? Oh, Michael Saylor is his name. And okay. one of the, one of the, th- Michael Saylor joins me to discuss anthropology, energy, and technology from principles that we build the intellectual properties. So like they get wow. into some pretty intense that I resonates, it vibes with me fully. So I think it's it all matters. With you. End of the exactly. Day. I think you so, would really, you would enjoy it as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm all down for round two. I mean, I, I know if this was like choppy and whatnot, we'll have to see what your audience thinks. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe there's questions. They'll we can like answer. it. You're going yeah. like <laughs> you to like it. You're going to take it and you're going to like it. <laughs> Just too damn bad. Yeah. Anyway, so awesome. Clayton, thank you so much for being here. I and uh, yeah, anytime. And thanks everyone for joining us. And don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a review, whatever the heck. Share this with your friends, your dog, your cat, your mom. I'd really appreciate it. Um, Okay, awesome.